So is the amount of compute processing power that you need for full autonomy fixed? Or would you have to upgrade this every two years? How do you think about that? Well, I mean, I do think that we could we can achieve, we can in principle achieve full autonomy with the NVIDIA hardware, but it's a much harder software problem. And like, so you, have, like, you sort of really have to try to budget your compute and do all sorts of tricks to manage how you use your compute. So it's a harder software problem with um, hardware that's, you know, 2000% better, you just, you don't have to do that, that constant budgeting. It, and so the software, software problem is much easier. So like, I think with the current hardware and a lot of effort, we could, we could get to full self-driving with maybe, maybe being like 50 to hundred percent safer than a person. But with hardware three, I think it's probably like a thousand percent safer than wow. a person. Are you presenting this to the regulators? Do they understand this? Do they want to understand this? I think they'll, they understand data. So if we show, yeah. you know, billions of miles w with a given safety level, then they will, they certainly appreciate that. I mean, simply saying like, hey, we've got this really fast computer and everything's going to work. It's like, well, you know, that's just a statement. Like, but if you've got hard data, billions of miles, and you can show the accident rate and the intervention rate, and that essentially it's unsafe if you don't have autopilot on, right. which I think really it's unequivocal at this point, no matter how you slice, slice the data, it is unequivocal at this point that it's safer to have autopilot on. The, the data comment you just made, we were uh, very interested that the regulators, after they examined the first fatality, I think it was the, the, data, the data around the first fatality that they just swung in your favor. I, I think it was shocking, and I'm surprised more people haven't uh, really taken note of that. Yeah, it, there is a, a phenomenon that we that we noticed that would that would happen. Essentially, it's like if you yeah, if people just get get overconfident with the system, even though we repeatedly warn them, you must pay attention to the road. Like literally, every time you use autopilot, it says you must pay attention to the road. You must keep your hands on the wheel. Every single time you use it, it says this. And if you take your hands off the wheel for too long, it will start beeping at you and then slow down and that kind of thing. So anyway, so it's just, but really at this point, there's this just, just flat out no question that it's safer. Was, you know, like I would recommend it to, to anyone. Um, it's just getting better. So, yeah. So have you noticed a change in the regulatory environment? Are you feeling sort of more confident than previously? Or is this sort of, you know, it's still such an open question that, I mean, Tesla's in a really unique position because you have the data to show them. So it almost seems like, you know, you could be having sort of more advanced conversations about sort of proving that safety level. I guess, what are your, what are your thoughts? Right now, we're, we're, with a few exceptions, we are not being held back by regulators. Is that a U.S. comment or is it global? I mean, it's, there are a few jurisdictions in the world that are more conservative. Right now, it's, it's I would not uh, say that we're held back by regulators. In minor ways, like for example, like we expect to, I think, get the latest autopilot approval, navigator autopilot, I think, is going to get approved in Europe next week or something like that. But this is these are tiny delays yeah. in the, in the yeah. grand scheme of things. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's great. And so as you think about sort of this development of autonomous driving and, and the rollout strategy, you know, Tesla's not taking this other approach that, say, Waymo and, and others are doing, going city by city. You're going to do a wider rollout. There's still sort of, I don't know if you want to call it geofencing, but there's, you know, it, it's you start with highways and then you go sort of off highway. And then are you going to go country by country or, or sort of how are you thinking of this evolving in terms of sort of the full steps to, I guess, to get to full autonomy, you know, are you then tackling intersections or are you sort of adding feature, 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 and then country by country? Yeah, we, we, we start off with with highway because that tends to be the what actually matters the most. If like you, if particularly if you're stu stuck in traffic and stop and go traffic, that's very painful. And it has the, the most benefit to have autonomy on freeways, which are usually con congested in almost every city in the world. Mm -hmm. So in fact, myself and others doing is that even if there's a shorter way home, you still take the highway because you can use autopilot. I stopped using ways, for example, just like, you know, just take the highway because then I have autopilot on. You know, going through a bunch of windy streets versus, which is yes. kind of like a lot of mental yes. overhead as yes. opposed to just sitting on the highway and cruising along is, is, is better. So we're generally like got, gone with, uh, okay, what's going to add the most value to people? But also, hi, you know, highway accidents tend to be higher velocity and so more okay. potentially more dangerous. Like fatalities are very proportionate to speed. Below a certain speed, it's very difficult to hurt yourself or die, in, in, in particularly in a Tesla. Above a certain speed, it's, it's more dangerous. So it's, it's like, okay, where, where can it be most helpful from a convenience and a safety standpoint? So if we focus on highways for that reason, then intersections are the next thing. And some of them, it, it, that, you have a lot of variance in intersections. 
So that's what you know we're working on right now, and you know it's it's working at a development level. No problem recognizing stop signs and, and traffic lights, but you do get ambiguity in some complex intersections with traffic lights, like which one's the light, the, the right light to focus on. Even if you're a person, it's not always clear. Yeah. So that that's the, what we're working on there. So we'll try to make that work in the U.S. and then we'll extend that functionality elsewhere. So it, in like highways in Europe are different, particularly when you deal with corner cases. So we're kind of making it work in like Norway is a priority for us because we've got a lot of customers there, and. I think we're close to having that ready. Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland. I guess one general question. What do you think of letting other automakers build on Tesla's platform? <laughs> I mean, generally we found it's like quite it's not it's not easy to work with traditional automakers. It's not like first of all, they're not exactly banging down our door to work with us. Nobody took you up on your patents. Your I, open no, patents. I think I think they have actually. Oh, you really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's on, interesting. On the patents they have. That's very different from say creating an integrated system. Sure. Like, like oh, so yeah. You know, if, if there was an automaker out there that wanted to implement the same hardware system as as Tesla and, and use our software, I think we'd be very open to it. But we're not going to change it. What tends to happen is they want to work with us, but then they'll say, oh, but we want you to change the following like six things. Like, no, because it's going <laughs> to slow us down massively. Yeah. And and so we you know it's like, if you want to use exactly our thing, that's fine. Yeah. But then they don't want to use exactly our thing. Right. We're open to other automakers using a supercharged network. We're open to them to using using our autopilot system. They just need to make it work without a ton of overhead on Tesla engineering. 